What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Jiu Jitsu Junction podcast. This is episode 12. <laughs> I'm doing that stupid. <laughs> anyway, so this is episode 12. Uh, this is Andre, and I'm here with Chase. And uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, effective pre class routines that you can use before you step on the mats for Jiu Jitsu. Or, I mean, realistically, you'll probably be on the mats warming up before class, but you know what I mean. Pre, pre-class jujitsu routine, uh, what kind of things we can do, what kind of benefits we can get, you know, so. Uh, Wait a minute, I thought I thought I was supposed to show up after warm-ups. <laughs> well, you're not, well, you're, o- you're over purple belt, so that's no. true. You can show up after warm-ups in most <laughs> jujitsu schools. Please don't ever skip warm-ups. <laughs> I don't skip warm-ups, I promise. If you skip warm-ups, your body will hurt, and when, as you, it, well, I guess you may be older. So I promise if you skip warm ups, your body will hurt. Don't skip warm ups, please. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Don't, sk- skipping warm ups is a terrible idea. Yeah. Um, uh, es- especially if you don't already have an athletic base. You, you need to yeah. be warmed up. Uh, it, you don't want the reason that you're not able to maximize your learning and your performance to be because you skipped something that's a little bit unpleasant. Well, you know, uh, I go back to kids all the time, training kids. Uh, I, the warm ups another period, another time that I can get them better at something. You know, yeah. they're 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 working better at you know connecting their mind to their body through through the specific drills that they're doing to warm up. So, you know, even that pre class warm up. You know, I got kids that come in early, and we have a couple pre class routines that um, are specifically focused. So. Yeah, and uh, building building up that general general fitness and readiness is. God, everyone wants to ignore it, but it is such a huge factor in your performance, especially if you're like most people and you, you're you like a white collar worker and you're, you're going from sitting at a desk to grapple fighting someone. Mm-hmm. That's that's a huge change. Definitely. And like I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty uh, guilty of doing something like this myself. And like my first role really sucks <laughs> if I do not do some kind of pre-class routine yeah because sometimes you walk in and, and maybe the instructor says all right grab a buddy yeah time to roll yeah especially at our place right so yeah, yeah. it's yeah. kind of important to show up 10 at least 10 minutes right yeah. uh 10 minutes is god there's a big difference like every minute you add before class yeah. where you're you're like breaking things loose or getting your heart rate up are uh, it just pays dividends throughout the class because you're not having trouble executing drilling or executing rolling because you're not loose enough or because you're winded and you haven't gotten through your, your first wind or whatever. You haven't gotten to your second wind. Right. So, um, it's kind of a no brainer to make sure that you're primed so that you're not held back in your learning or your performance. And I I would probably recommend, uh, you know, making it a making it a habit to be you know that ten or fifteen minutes early, um, and getting a a mobility routine. You know, because your 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 instructor, you're probably going to have a warm up in your class, uh, but that that tends to be um, on air movements a lot of times, like you know forward rolls, backward rolls, okay. shrimping across the mat, you know things like that that are not necessarily working on uh, you know mobility or you know it's just kind of warming your body up in generally, uh, you know that's a good time to work on mobility. I would recommend like a mobility routine, uh, before and make, you know, some, just to add extra time, especially if maybe you only get two days a week, you know, that extra 10, 15 minutes before class, you know, that's a good focus time to get better, get more mobile, you know, and and we'll talk later, you know, being more mobile helps in a lot of ways. So. Yeah, for sure. Mobility is kind of king when it comes to, um, having your best possible general preparedness to learn in jujitsu. Yeah. There's, there's a whole lot more that goes into how you perform on the mats, but mobility is definitely a huge component of that as well. Um, I mean, mo- man, one of the biggest returns for mobility that uh, probably the injury prevention, uh, the, you, you putting your body through, you know, through its full range of motions. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's usually, and there's a lot of different mobility uh, drills out there. There's general mobility. There's BJJ specific mobility. Yeah. You know, 
Um, but they're all, it's all the same. It's putting tension on your core and moving your body through range of motion, through the full range of motion. Uh, and that's going to, that's going to look different for every individual. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, that's something that, um, you know, the reason why it's a staple in what I do with the kids is if a kid comes in, you know, and a lot of kids come in, they played video games, especially with, uh, you know, the past four or five years, the way things have been, you know, kids spend a lot of time inside. They've spent a lot of times on a video game. Um, and most of the kids are not as mobile. Um, you know, their, their hips are kind of locked up a little bit. Yeah. Their lower backs, their hamstrings are tight. Uh, so, you know, you can visibly see a kid, you know, in his first couple of days not be able to move and you see him progress. And it usually takes a month or two, uh, you know, solid mobility drills. And then the kid's like, oh, this is easier. Mm-hmm. You know, so you can actually see the return from your mobility drills. Um, yeah. And and just because just we're talking about kids doesn't mean that it isn't extremely yeah. applicable applicable got it applicable to adults right it, it's we're, we're all human beings right they they start out they're they're just a little they haven't stiffened up from sitting at a desk for years yeah right yep, yep. and it's the same right it's a yeah i guess i would have went ahead and go through that example is you know a lot of times when i start uh, a per, some personal lessons with someone who wants to get they want to learn jujitsu um they're not comfortable yet to go into a class mm-hmm. But, you know, they've worked a job where maybe they haven't had to bend over and touch their toes or they haven't had to, you know, butterfly their knees or pull their heels to their butt or push their hips to the sky, you yeah. know, yep. um, getting a small ball. I don't know how many jobs require you to get small, um, you know, so uh, I've had some. <laughs> yeah, like none. You know, <laughs> so I've had some uh, some adults who have, uh, you know, th- we start with those mobility drills you know mm-hmm. we, we start with working on getting them getting them loose uh and that's the first thing we do before every time every bjj class uh that if i'm training them i want to make sure they can move and especially if they've worked at a job you know that, that's done that um you know that that's definitely a a big focus uh, when i train adults as well yeah. so I, I apologize i just go kids all the time but you know that's just every day but any lesson that i do um you know especially someone who's who hasn't done a lot you know and they're getting back into it mobility is the first thing i do mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's uh that's something that's just kind of lacking in most adult in most adults in general at this point like you, you get a lot of a lot of adults that are like you know i feel like you know making a change and then they go and they lift weights you know that's that's the first thing people think about yeah. especially with men they're just like yeah okay i'll get strong right it's not the whole picture when it comes to something more uh complex like creating a a body that's man high performing for grappling right yeah i mean and you know i know we're talking about high performing grappling but if you've got a body that doesn't you know move well already you know in strength you're going to a weight room you could actually be you know hurting your mobility and, and causing issues that you know may not be correctable um Oh, it's, I, I don't know. I think, it's worry, all, yeah. I think it's always correctable. Like I would, yeah. I would rather somebody lift weights than do nothing. Uh, I guess. Yeah. I guess you're right there, but yeah. Uh, lift uh, weight, weights, lift correctly. weights correctly. There we go. Good, yeah, good catch. Exactly. Sorry. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. I don't want to push you away from doing that. Right. Yeah. But, um, I just worry, uh, even if I have somebody that does strength, you know, man, I worry about getting somebody to squat if they can't, but their mobility doesn't allow them to squat properly yet. So, yeah. Um, you know, I've watched people go in a weight room and quarter squat and quarter bench because their shoulders hurt or, and they're still doing it. And I'm like, that doesn't, you know, if your if your shoulders hurt from bench press, maybe do some back exercises, you know, but that's, that's, Sorry, not, the, yeah, totally that's, different. that's not the, that's I'll not the real point of this, but that's, um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so we have written down here, like, is the warm up done at jujitsu schools enough? Uh, definitely don't skip them, like we said earlier, yeah. right? Um, and and I have to say personally, so I started jujitsu at about two fifty five foot seven, so I was a roly poly. I did nothing but lifting, um, like like the people we described, right? Yeah, and. Uh, the warm-ups in jiu-jitsu were really hard for me and there were some dynamic stretches and some static stretches included as well as the forward rolls and like some jumping jacks and push-ups occasionally things like that helped a lot 
Like I went, I went from like a foot and a half away from touching my toes to being able to grab the middle of my feet. And, and that took, that took like six months. How long Uh, would you say that routine was in class? Just wondering, like probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 12 minutes. It was kind of short at this school. I've been to schools where it's like a lot more. This, this was a, less than 10 minutes in, I've in done my a experience. 27-minute warm-up before. And I was like, what are we doing? Yeah, this is an It was 27 minutes of shrimping and rolling and, oh, man, technical stand-ups and falling technicals. And, oh, man, it was rough. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. My, but, like, but like the, the kind of the point there is uh, – you know, it is effective to a point, but if you want to build the full um, preparedness for jujitsu, you might want to go beyond that because while that routine really helped build my passive flexibility, it didn't build up all the mobility in a way that increased my performance doing like mobile things like hitting an arm bar fast from side control or whatever, right? Um, having a very solid S mount that was, you know, movable and I can react to what was going on. That didn't happen for me until I started doing specific mobility outside of the warm ups. Yeah, well, that the instructor, you know, he, he's got, you know, an outline time for that. So he, he's coming up with the best set of drills that he can do that are going to relate to, to what he's, you know, yeah. to, to your sport specific, you know. So if, when you when you start stepping outside and focusing, okay, now I'm going to do something that's going to specifically work on being a little more mobile, being you know, yeah. uh, you know hitting and mobility drills. You know, we, we've got a, I think we actually have, maybe we have a video. I know we'll, we'll definitely have some. Yeah, soon. we will be building out a, a resource library. But one where we show like yeah. the connection between a mobility drill and like a triangle or a mobility drill and an arm bar, you know, to show that there are direct things you can do mobility wise to get better at specific techniques. Oh, for sure. So that, you know, using, if you have the time, I would definitely find a routine beforehand. Yeah. So, so the warm ups are kind of like, they've got like an hour, maybe an hour and a half to turn a bunch of office workers into quasi athletes. Um, so they're, they're doing the best they can. And and if you want to like real general and real, you know, make sure they're touching all their bases. Everybody is going to feel, uh, is going to benefit from doing some shrimps. Everybody's going to benefit from doing forward rolls if they can (laughs) backwards rolls if they can, but like jumping jacks, like if you do, if you don't do much and all you're doing is, is jujitsu and some lifting those, those very basic things they go a long way for for that that type of person, which is the typical demographic of most classes. I guess we go ahead and uh, nip this one in the butt too. You know, if we're talking, you know, you're newer, you're starting. Like this might be the hardest part of class for you. <laughs> it sure was for me, right? It like, was, uh, it was go really ahead tough. and get yeah. get out. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, I know we joked about not coming in, but it, we we have a heavyweight. Um, he specifically comes in when he does come in. 15 minutes late, but it's just so he didn't have to do all those warm up movements and drills, yeah. you know, so make sure you're at least doing that first before we add some mobility in before, you know, cause I know that's, I've seen it, you know, that warm up's usually the hardest. Cause it, it just, you know, you might be able to get through a class with just an arm bar and never have to pick your hips up over your head. But yeah, some of those weren't making, making somebody who's not used to rolling roll, man, you, you get, you get the sweat going. You really get warm. Yeah. You gotta do, you gotta do as much as, possible to address like because it's it will be the hardest part i promise it it was it was definitely the hardest part for me and and like that's that's okay like you're 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 here to build some uh, build build some capabilities wow that is really sorry guys my uh the there's a lot of noise in our headphones anyway so we're just gonna try and ignore it the best we can. <laughs> yeah, because you'll never hear. It. Uh, I think it, it can sometimes be heard, but cool. and anyways, like it's if if you, if you guys hear it, you can comment below. Sorry. Anyway, blizzard. Yeah, blizzard. <laughs> um. So. So yeah, there's there's gonna be a lot of incremental improvements that will happen just by doing this. It's hard. We're trying to build our our uh, general physical preparedness, and we're also trying to build jujitsu skills. 
the warm-ups, the mobility slash pre-class routine or rituals. And like, I even think that the pre-class routine should include something as simple as drinking some water. <laughs> no question. Dr- drink some water, uh, eat, have, a, have a snack. If that's the case, I'd probably start your pre-class routine when you get in the car to come to class. Like, yeah. get in the car, put your water bottle down beside you, wait, wait a minute. Take your drink and, and move it and move it on that way. Yeah, uh, make that you know that's when it, that's when your pre class routine because I, I like that. Um, so many uh, so many adults will will go a whole day without drinking water and like, well, I was busy. I'm like, well, I drink a cup of coffee and I, I drink a tea at lunch. And I'm like, yeah, well, just just get get one of those big like motivational <laughs> water bottles that's like Keep doing 64 it. ounces and Keep it just going. it's it's telling you yeah, oh you're doing great water. you're doing great yeah get get some salt and water in you that that to me that's the first thing you do for a pre-class routine. i gotta add that into all the stuff when i talk to kids i've never man that, that needs to be added in your pre-class routine drink water like if you had done it all day when it's time you know you're coming to class mm-hmm. let's start drinking water yeah that's good. That's a good little additive. I like oh, that. Honestly, in schools, uh, the kids are encouraged not to drink too much water so they don't have to pee all the time. Yep, we've already uh, that little hurdle with yeah. with ours, and yeah. I made sure the teacher knows, like, hey, listen, he's going to have a bottle of water with him. Yeah, like, my, mine's gotten in trouble because he went too many times. I was like, wait, so so how many times did he go? Two, and how and how long how long of a period of time? An, an hour and a half, two hours on. Okay. All right. I heard you. Got you. That's it. <laughs> like I'm not, Got I'm not changing. I'm not changing anything. No. He's, he's well hydrated. Yeah. I bet the teacher is not hydrated. No, but yeah. So be but, browed. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <got Ugh>. <laughs> but yeah. So, so make that a, that's, that's n- sure. number one, get some, get some water in you. You uh you can you should have a snack if uh you're you're like petering out beforehand if that's at all possible. I can't believe I forgot snack. Snack should definitely be pre pre class routine. <laughs> you should definitely have a snack. Like like I mean, it, God, even even if you're overweight and you're looking to lose weight, yeah. you you should it it can be a small snack. I would actually almost say that would man being crazy. Maybe you would want to as long as it isn't a sugar. You know, something that's not not high in sugar, you almost won't do just for the fact of keeping your body moving and your body's like, oh, you're feeding me and it'll start, to pro- you know, your system. So I would definitely, no matter what, we have to have a snack. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if I would go that far. Like, how how much damage are people really doing if they have a, a granola bar? Not, well, just if you, like, if we're talking about, uh, you know, using workout to to potentially, you know, lose weight system wise. It's, through the science if you're having something sugary it's going to shoot your 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 blood levels up and you're not going to be able to burn like it, for, it's, for it's insulin slowly. or what yeah what? Okay. yep and right. it's going to have the same insulin response um and it's going to slow down your metabolism and it's your, your burning fat like that's the that's the whole idea with sugar that's why that's when your insulin it, it doesn't burn fat the way it's supposed to so i think that's why i would try to stay away from a sugary but there's a lot of no sugar stuff just something that doesn't you know really shoot your shoot your insulin up um because one of the biggest benefits of jujitsu is it is a lower heart rate long period of time class i think um, yeah for most for most yeah cases, so yeah. you know burning fat is one of the benefits of jujitsu because it's a s- softer slower pace um so that would just i think that you would probably try to stay away from so what, so like what what kind of like a, a fruit no, no uh, you, you a lot like of that's, the low that's, that's a protein so, something with a protein a protein protein gives you energy proteins an hour breakdown rate mm-hmm. um there's plenty of protein bars out there that don't have a ton of sugar you know less than 10 grams you but know, but and that's but probably some, the most some efficient. amount of carbs right like mm-hmm. th- don't you need carbs in order to perform your best most of the time yeah no yeah but if you're a little yeah but if you're a little overweight if you're a little overweight you you should have some stores to work with and we should be fine and obviously we have to adjust but you should have some stores to work with, I believe. Yeah, mm. well, I, I eat a bowl of oatmeal. Like I'm not the fittest guy here, but but it, it makes me feel way better during training. So That's I do I do it anyway. Understood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so, I guess performance. Yeah, you know. I mean, if you're if you're if you're like significantly overweight, 
and you're doing a normal jujitsu class because you're overweight, you're going to be burning a lot. Oh yeah. Just, just because you're bigger. Yeah, for sure. Cause like the whole, the whole time I was going, like I went from like 250 down to I've seen 195 maybe. and I was doing that eating a, eating a carby snack beforehand. I've seen maybe four huge trend transformations through jujitsu, two for kids and two for adults, you know, and they were all like that man, crazy 75, hundred pounds, like mm -hmm. just like, Whoa, you lost crazy. And like, what all you don't know, nah, just cut this out, cut this out. And you know, doing a bunch of jujitsu impressive. <laughs> yeah. You know, probably four over the last probably eight years that I've seen. Okay, uh, so like we we keep off tracking. I think it's still kind of related, but <laughs> off tracking a little bit. So um, the other kind of uh, way that pre class routines can happen sometimes, and and this is something that I'm currently doing, and maybe I'm doing it wrong, but uh, I do calisthenics and or lifting immediately before class, just because of for time reasons. Mm. I like it because what better to loosen up and to get blood flow after a workout that you pumped a ton of blood into your muscles, everything is tight than jujitsu. So I actually like to work out before jujitsu. I really like that combination. Yeah. It, like it, it seems like really conventional like wisdom is like you lift way before you refuel, you rehydrate, and then, then you do jujitsu. If, if I felt that, like that, that kind of breaks up my, my mental, um, capacity. So I don't really like doing it that way. That's why I started doing that calisthenics and lifting immediately before, but yeah, no, I, I, I like it before. And, and I guess, you know, perfect world would be what, like a, an early morning workout and then you get to rest and then a class later on that day. But. That's, I really like I don't, pairing I don't, them together. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't think that that's the that's like possible for most most people. No, probably not. So, you know, like a professional athlete, if you could write a perfect schedule out, that would probably be it. But yeah, you know, no. So, yeah, for so like I, I, we try to slant things towards you know most most of our audience, which is like you know white belts that are. Or or anybody in jujitsu on it is not just white belts for for this for yeah. this topic. So this this uh, pre class routine, I like to lift. Okay. I, I I like to lift and I like to do it beforehand, because I don't want to be relying up on. Now do you do you change your lift slightly because it is like before a jujitsu class like me like uh, if I lift let's say I lift Monday Wednesday Friday. Right. Or I'm sorry. I go to jujitsu Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I lift Monday through Friday. Tuesday, Thursday is a little harder, a little longer lift because I don't do jujitsu after. Mm -hmm. Do you do you change it a little bit? Like if if on Monday, Wednesday, Friday you're going to do jujitsu, do you s s lighten your lift up some? So, so the the program that I'm doing right now, I'm I'm. Uh, it's all based on uh, RPEs. Okay. So like. The RPE will change. And you have you have a you have a program designed by somebody, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. One, so you got one, a professional. It's not just us. Yeah, just something yeah, you're putting together. You yeah. got a professional. Doing. So, so I have I have like an individualized um, routine, okay. and it kind of like tracks how things have been going in previous weeks. We do adjustments. Like, okay, this should be approximately what he can should. probably see numbers and tell if you're tired that week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you must have slept bad on Tuesday. Yeah, you <laughs> like, probably look at number. Yeah, okay. That's, yeah. yeah, and and like you don't you don't have to go out and do that. You can just use that kind of principle. Like you should be, you know, you should have three reps left in the tank on the days that you're going to do jujitsu immediately after. Sorry, I just want to ask another question about because I mean we're we're you know, talking about you know ideal pre class routine and lifting weights with it. Is it um you know. You're you're lifting weights with a focus for grappling, right? And we ain't got to dig any more any deeper. Uh, I'm doing a lot of compounds. Okay, cool. Um, just just so, wondering. So like I'm just like I'm trying to get the most general. bang bang for my buck as far as because I don't have right. a ton of, of time. I don't have I don't have a lot of of uh, juice left in my CNS, right? So I'm just trying to get the most I possibly can out of uh, a shortened period of time. So my lifts are like 
40 minutes. Look, I'm hammering your questions now. I got a bunch of them. <laughs> so after lifting, um, do you need, like, uh, do you have a slight pre-class routine that you specifically need because you, maybe you're a little tighter after lifting? Or have you found that kind of just jujitsu in itself is, uh, you know, loosens you up enough after a good workout? Because I'm, obviously after any good workout, you're going to be a little tighter, right? A little pumped. It, it, it depends on what i'm working beautiful easy enough um yeah. so so if i feel very tight which isn't i usually feel looser after lifting and i know that that's not everybody's experience but that must mean i'm like waking up like an 80 year old man <laughs> like I, go, I, go, I wake i get a little blood in my, my joints yeah and then i'm good. like oh okay yeah okay so so for me i feel more mobile um if it's if it's immediately before I go to jujitsu. I do not need to do too much mobility. If it is several hours away, then I have to break it loose again. But it's not worse than normal. It's probably I could easier. imagine if you had a little bit of time down, you do get tight. Yeah. Well, that's that's a special. So you got to have a little bit of a pre class routine for yeah. sure. Okay. Cool. Let's yeah. So um. So. Oh, and um, you know, we talk pre class routine. Talk about calisthenics a little bit. I want to touch on that. Um, you know, I think I think doing some stuff that is more explosive that gets your heart rate up. That's that's you know, kind of fast twitch calisthenic esque. I, I think that's really important for the days when when you maybe it's a, a a roll class or an open mat where it's just rolling, or maybe you know the instructor goes, okay, get your mouthpiece, get a drink of water. You got two minutes down, and it's live rolls. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good place for. Some of your quick little uh, calisthenic stuff, you know, squat jumps, pops, plyometric, that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that that's really good for your muscles and stuff right before, because it gets your CNS, it gets your, your nervous mm -hmm. system firing. And I think that's really good for your performance in your roles. So that might be a good place for, for that to kind of fit in. But you, you can't go wrong with doing all that. I mean, it, what's it going to hurt before you do class to get your cns firing better so your brain's working better and clear yeah. you know so yeah. um doing a little cat especially if you've been in an office all day right or if yeah. you've been in a job where maybe there's not a lot of brain power that's happened yeah or maybe a lot of brain power that's happened and your brain's kind of uh you need something to get you firing again you know that, yeah. that calisthenic that little short cardio might be a yeah a way to get it pumping. Yeah, if i'm going in cold no lift nothing i i and i've been doing really heavy mental work I have to do something. Like that. Yeah, like I have, to, I have, like I need to get back in my body and piloting it Makes sense. appropriately yeah. instead of just being like head in the clouds, like oh, what's going? On? Yeah. You know. <laughs> Makes sense. So uh, yeah, um, so like, like I like to end most of these things. I want to give people something very actionable with like some suggestions for what they should do in the shortest amount of time. Let's give them our recommendation for minimum effective dose to get all of the benefits out of the pre-class routine, you know, the, the mobility, you know, a little bit of injury prevention that kind of goes along with mobility and performance, both in terms of learning and as well as physical performance in the class. 15 minutes before class, about 12 minutes set you a timer and you got about 12 minutes because you need a few minutes to drink water gather yourself and get your stuff for class so about 12 minutes you spend about seven minutes on some mobility you you do some general mobility then you'll do a little bit of bjj specific mobility like baseball slides um shrimps, S, S yeah as sits well your shrimps and stuff are usually going to be taken care yeah, of in your class okay yep so it would be mobility driven um and uh, so it would be that little bit of mobility or general mobility. And then you would go to your specific mobility, your BJJ, kind of your SC. It's kind of stuff that'll put you through your moves. Um, and then a little bit of static stretching and, uh, dynamic stretching where, you know, you know, picking your knees up, uh, like down blocks, touching your toes and your back legs coming up, you know, just some dynamic Frankenstein walks, Yeah, a few dynamic stretches. And then you should have about a minute and a half to two minutes left. 10, 10 burpees, five squat jumps, just something yeah. super simple. Yeah, five explosive push ups. Yeah, five know? explosive push ups that you've done a burpee, which is full. You've done a squat, which is your legs. You've done a five plyo explosive push ups. 
and uh, there's a there's a cool little one we do a lot where you you just spin boom boom yeah. real fast with your feet you kind of mm-hmm. squat and you spin there's something about spinning that is really good yeah. about your cns you know just spinning getting your feet down so like that's four four exercises there yeah you know uh, a burpee a squat jump a push-up where you where you push yourself off the ground mm-hmm. um you know that that's kind of your i think that would be it that cool. that would be perfect and then you have should have about two to three minutes get you a drink you know and, mm-hmm. and and be ready for class okay okay so now let's shrink mm-hmm. it down even more for us Beautiful. even busier people so if all we have is 10 minutes we would do kind of the same thing maybe just shortened it a little bit i probably but, wouldn't do the, the cardio calisthenics at the yeah, end no no cardio calisthenics honestly i can i can see how a lot of people would have trouble doing that because they would feel awkward about it but no one's going to feel sense. no one's going to feel awkward about doing like some basic mobility well some people will and i can understand but it's not the same as doing fucking burpees like a like a, like people are going to be like yeah no for what's, sure what's bob doing over there <laughs> you know like right so so um i find that there's actually a lot of value in doing even 5 minutes of of mobility and just kind of oh, yeah. like uh. like like uh, a five ham- minute timer and don't stop. Yeah. Just do ha- them all. Hammer out the mobility. It, it, you you do it fast enough and it turns into a little bit of a cardio pump. Um, yeah, you get you sure. get to you get to like get a lot out of it. All of all of the same things of the mobility s- section that we just talked about, mm-hmm. right? Just do it quick enough. Yes, yeah, so general mobility and then your your jujitsu specific mobility, and and that that on top of the instructor's warm up. Man, it's going to be. It's going to make a big difference. Big for difference. You. Big yeah. difference. You, you'll notice your hips. There, there's a lot of. There's a big trend on the shorts right now uh, online where everybody's showing how to unlock your hips. Yeah. Unlock your hips in your lower back. It'll unlock your hips in your lower back. Yeah. Yep. For sure. You know, do some good mobility yep. drills. There's a bunch out there. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, let us know uh, if you want to hear anything in the comments below, or if you have, you know, any comments. Um, so we will see you next time.